Melbourne is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Rocky Romero joining us here today back on the show. I should have said, is this your first time here, Rocky? But I missed the my, joke. Like my thousandth time. Yeah, you're practically the co-host here. I know. Get rid of Sempervivi and put me in, coach. Sometimes you're more useful. No offense, Mike. <laughs> All the time you're more useful. <laughs> we love you, Semper Vivi. Thank you. See, I, can't, I can't collect workers' comp anyway or unemployment right. insurance, whatever it is, if he buys me. So. <laughs> oh, exposing the business. That's, the yeah. Side, that's... The underbelly of, of figure four. Dude, I'm looking at this lineup of shows, and we were talking before the break. We're going to talk about well, – we plan to come on and talk about Autumn Attack here, but I, I was going through this this deal, and I'm like, how many shows do we have coming up? I mean, we obviously have all of the the shows through the G1, but then we've got Fighting Spirit Unleashed 2021. We've got Autumn Attack. We've got another uh, showdown. We've got Road to Power Struggle in Japan. Like, there's so many shows here. And, of course, when we're talking to you, it's not even New Japan. I mean, we could talk about pretty much virtually any promotion except for, uh, for WWE. But Autumn Attack is coming up, and it'll be taking place in Garland, Texas, on September 25th. Which, uh, that's in two days, everybody. So, now's your chance. Yeah, yeah two nights. We're, uh, we're in Curtis Colo Center, CurtisColoCenter.com for tickets. Uh, Saturday night and Sunday night. It's a hell of a lineup. It's it's a really, really crazy lineup. Minoru Suzuki be, will be there. Lance Archer. Filthy Tom Waller, friend of the show, I hear. Uh, Ryusuke Taguchi, Ishimori. We got Robbie Eagles, the junior champ, coming in. Jay White, Will Ospreay, and... Osprey, I hear, is uh, is going to be debuting a new uh, uh, a new person in in the United Empire faction. So there's all kinds of stuff. Really? Going on. It, yeah, it's going to be a loaded loaded two days. We've got a scoop here. Yeah, Will Osprey is facing Carl Fredericks. We've got Fred Rosser and Minoru Suzuki. And yes, yeah. yes, Filthy Tom Lawler. <laughs> this this is my personal. It's not just because I I know Filthy, but it's because I've also seen him work with Ren Narita. Tom Lawler and Ren Narita. <laughs> like, are we going to have a, is the commission going to be there to make sure if this gets out of hand, like somebody can leap in there? We'll just send Suzuki down and see what happens. Uh, well, the, actually, that would be a, that's a match <laughs> for you right there. Right. So, yeah, that's on the show. And Taguchi and you and Taguchi, actually, against uh, Royce Isaacs and Jarrell Nelson. Another right. Buddy Wayne student. There's a lot of Buddy Wayne students here on the show, Rocky, I've noticed. There's a lot of good talent up in uh, in Washington. I was just recently there for Defy Wrestling, and it was, a, it was we had two nights uh, in uh, what is it the what's the building that they use there? Washington the, Hall. Uh, Washington Hall. Yeah. Loaded shows. That was awesome. Got to wrestle with uh, with Josh Alexander the first night, and then Clark Connors the second night. Another Buddy Wayne uh, protege. So yeah, I mean, it's 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 wrestling is back, guys. Was that it's, the show that uh, awesome. Buddy's son uh, wrestled on? Yes, yes. Just turned 16. It's incredible. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a heck of a talent. I used to train with him in Buddy's, Buddy's uh, his school when he was like, you know, 11. And mm-hmm. so he was small. And I thought, man, one of these days we're just going to tear it up in a match. And all of a sudden he was 6'2". <laughs> now it's like, what yeah. a waste. <laughs> it's just not going to work anymore. And he's not done growing, too, I'm sure. Uh, no, if his mother's we'll any indication. God, these shows are just I just I'm looking at Jay White against Robbie Eagles and Jay White against uh Daniel Garcia. I I just the, the mat, it's like match after match after match is it's incredible. Who how did these matches kind of come to be? I don't know how much you can reveal here, but like to put these matches together, how did it come about? Because like Leo Rush and Taiji Ishimori, I wouldn't have thought of off the top of my head, but on paper, looking at it, it's like, yeah, I want to see that. You know, how did match. some of this happen? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think, um, you know, obviously with, with Japan being the way it is, I mean, G1 season, obviously G1 is, is always going to be, you know, some of the best wrestling you'll see all year. But um, I think with New Japan Strong and New Japan Strong finally making it, to uh to you know touring now so now we're, we're touring we're going to be in philadelphia we're going to be in texas this week um you know we want to give you know matches that are appealing to the fans and we want our fans to to come and see what new japan strong is all about obviously they're you know super familiar with the main product from japan and you know we don't have the okadas we don't have the tanahashis with us on this tour but um you know we want to be able to highlight uh, so many, so many great talents. Whether they be AEW, Impact, ROH, New Japan Strong, you know, whoever it may be. So, like, why not mix it up and open that forbidden door? You know, what's funny is it wasn't that long ago that I would watch this New Japan Strong show, 
And uh, and all of a sudden, I would see someone on NXT. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And then, you know, there was a period where everybody was just getting signed somewhere. And it was like, man, this got to be tough because you're trying to run these shows. And then this person's getting signed here. Well, now all of a sudden, a bunch of people have been released. And so now it feels like you're going to have, you know, the, whatever the opposite of Slim Pickens is. I mean, there's a lot of talent available now that can work for New Japan Strong. Plus people that are signed, like for AEW, we've seen show up in, in New Japan Strong. So is life easier now, or is it now actually more difficult because so many people are looking for work? I mean, it, it, there's definitely no shortage of talent and really good talent right now. And I, thank you to the WWE for making you know some of these guys uh, a, a little more popular and a little more known because, you know, they come back to, you know, something like New Japan Strong or wherever and uh, and they've got a bit more of a following. So I think it's just it's all good. It's all gravy. I'm really happy to see people get signed, especially p- talent that was featured on Strong. So, uh, you know, I, I want, you know, to see Strong be, you know, kind of like that step. Uh, like what NXT was supposed to be, you know, like maybe it's the step to the main roster of New Japan. Maybe it's a step to Impact. Maybe it's a step to, you know, AEW or wherever. Um, I think that that's really important and highlighting young talent is, is what it's all about. Um, and you're going to see that on these shows coming up. You know, I was so happy when I turned on New Japan Strong a few days ago and there were fans. Oh the my gosh, fans yeah. have returned. It just made the show... It's so much more fun with fans, obviously. But I would like to ask, uh, just out of curiosity here, I mean, can you confirm that uh, Juice Robinson is alive after that uh, senton onto that table that uh, decided not to break? He's alive and kicking. He, uh, he did hurt himself a little bit on that table. I was actually talking to him, and he, uh, he had to get an MRI on his knee, actually, because of that that crazy Because of the whatever. senton? He was trying to go for that senton. Yeah, he, like, hyperextended his, like, knee when he landed as well as his, you know, he knocked himself pretty hard with that. Uh, of with all that of the but injuries that I would have what? imagined coming out of that train wreck, a <laughs> knee injury was at the bottom of the list. Right. Which should right. tell you something. Cause it looked like he destroyed everything else in his body. This is true. Yeah. I, I I'm curious to see what's going to happen. Like on Sunday night, it's going to be juice Robinson against Hikaleo in a Texas bull rope match. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> Probably no tables would be my guess. <laughs> you never know. What did you? I, I know Mike's got a question, but this is a serious question here. Okay, I watch I watch Japanese wrestling that's in Japan, and they have yeah. these tables that are unbreakable, and these guys trying to do these spots, and the tables like made of cement. But this show was in America, where where we you know we have tables that are cheap and they break. But for some reason, on a New Japan show in America, you had a genuine Japanese table. It appeared. What happened? Brian, it's nothing <laughs> more important than bringing as much of the the genuine New Japan main roster stuff, like whether it be tables, rings, whatever, as we can bring to the U.S., the better. I yeah. hope you explain that to Juice when he when he's icing his whole body. Well, we needed a genuine table here, Juice. So sorry. What is? Do they not have pressed wood in Japan? I mean, no, like, we don't need that. We need good old fashioned oak. That, I was going to say, yeah, like men, you yeah, know, bouncing off of table cherry for? wood. <laughs> I mean, I've never, I've never been having dinner and the table broke. So I'm not sure what a, what a reinforced table is needed for in Japan, but uh, they have them. God, you know, I had a, a real question, too, and I'm just fixated by the fact that you guys continue to let Gallows do all of the merch with your, your Bass Pro Shop hat there, uh, talking <laughs> yeah, shop. Yeah. Of course, of course. Always always plugging away. Well, so speaking of knees, speaking of knees, with, with everything that's going on right now, Naito out of the G1. Boy, New Japan in Japan sometimes feels like it can't catch a break, but... You know, it's just it's a, it's a unique scenario going on right now. Obviously, you've you've surely watched the G one so far. Uh, Shingo and Ishii. Just some of your thoughts on on some of what's taken place over the first what three days? Yeah, Shingo Ishii was stand out. Um, I'm, I'm really excited to see uh, Ishii and uh, and Abushi. I haven't watched that yet, so I, I'm just super stoked for that. Zach and, and Naito, those that's like my favorite pairing right now in New Japan. Uh, it used to be Sonata and 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 uh, Zach, but now like Zach and Naito every year has like been just incredible. So and I feel like this was their best one by far. Now, I know you're not like the uh, the main guy in charge, even though I ask you that every time. 
But I mean, in terms of like New Japan Strong and the and the U.S. tours, uh, how is it decided who is coming from Japan? How long they're going to be here? I mean, do they are, are they? Uh, it's kind of a weird question, but are they excited to come here because of the situation in Japan? Is it fun for them to get a you know a little bit of time away from Japan, or what is what's the feeling from the people that come here, and how's that decided? You know, 100 uh, percent, everybody who's come over in the last, you know, few months, uh, especially starting from resurgence in August, like Nagata and Tanahashi, it's been nothing but praise because they're so excited to be back in front of fans that can, you know, cheer and, and you know, and, and they they love them so much when they come over to the U.S. You know, they're, they're really our stars. So um, everybody's like super excited and glad to do it. Uh, even Tanahashi was joking about trying to come every, once a month, you know, to the States. Uh, obviously, with the quarantine going back, is going to be difficult. And I mean, I, I guess that's really been the most difficult part is um, maybe the scheduling. Obviously, they have so many shows in Japan. G1 is kind of hard to schedule. So you're probably only going to get like junior heavyweights and people who wouldn't be in the G1. Um, but besides that, I, uh, you know, it's the two week quarantine heading back. That's been difficult because obviously you're just losing two weeks instead of just being able to go right back onto touring or, uh, you know, show up for a major show or whatever it might be. So it's really scheduling is difficult, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, actually, 100%. you you worked a show in Japan not that long ago. So, I mean, how much of a hassle was it? To go, I mean, going over, you got the two week quarantine. Then you can yeah. just come back. I mean, major hassle, minor hassle. What was it? Uh, I mean, the the quarantine itself wasn't that bad. It, it was two weeks, 14 days uh, in a hotel, but, uh, you, you know, not too bad for me. Like, I've got so many other projects and so many things going on, so it was actually kind of nice to be able to focus on stuff and not have to, you know, worry about other things. Um, but then yeah, it's just the time, right? You're there for two weeks, and then we, we actually did two weeks of shows. So I was there for a month, but... You know, usually you would pack in and in like a month, you probably do like 18, 19 shows, 20 shows maybe. And, you know, this time it was like maybe, you know, four or five shows there for a month, which is kind of just interesting. Yeah. Now, now not, not to be personal here or anything, but I mean, are you paid the same when you're over there sitting in your hotel for two weeks having five matches instead of 18? Yeah, whether I, I work zero matches or if I work 10 matches, 20 matches, I'm still getting paid the same. All so right, it's all so, good. so not too big a deal, aside <laughs> no, from sitting no, in a no hotel problem, for so. two weeks doing absolutely nothing. Right. So vaccination status, that sort of thing, it makes no difference? Is like you're quarantining one way or the other? So far, yes. You know, and, and recently, uh, you know, a lot of the, you know, most of the roster, I'd say, is vaccinated as well as the... Um, uh, the office as well. So, I mean, everything is moving in the right direction to, you know, get most of Japan vaccinated. Uh, so, you know, fingers crossed, maybe by January 4th that uh, there'll be some changes. Um, but, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we're just all waiting like everybody else, you know, for the borders to completely open and uh, get some talent over there. And maybe they can lighten these this 14 day quarantine, maybe make it three days or, you know, five days or something, because I think that that would be just fine maybe with some extra testing after you know and obviously watching for symptoms i mean that you know if you're fully vaccinated that should be all right you know uh you can see like the uk is starting to change their regulations so hopefully japan will be next all right stand by everybody back in a moment observer live alvarez here wrestling observer live mike sempervivi also of wrestlingobserver.com we'll have more later but it appears dynamite did a 0.48 to raw's 0.49 more details here in a moment, but New Japan Strong. We got Autumn Attack coming up on September 25th and September 26th. Garland, Texas, the Curtis Colwell Center. Oh, Curtis Colwell, a big wrestling fan. You can check that out this weekend. Tons of big matches. And Rocky, let's get some plugs in for that. And we've also got uh, Philadelphia coming up, which you'll be on to talk about here in a few weeks. Yeah, this weekend, get your uh, tickets at CurtisColwellCenter.com or check out NJPW1972.com uh, for tickets. And, uh, yeah, October 16th and 17th, uh, 2300 Arena, New Japan Strong, is making its debut over two days. It's going to be awesome. Monoru Suzuki's already involved. Will Ospreay is announced. Uh, Jay White and a bunch more surprises, so you're not going to want to miss that. Then Battle in the Valley. November 13th, San Jose, California. It's going to be live on, uh, I hear it's going to be live on Fight TV and NJPW World. So it's another huge event. 
And then we've got November 15th, New Japan Strong in Riverside, California for Detonation. And uh, yeah, check out New Japan Strong every Saturday night, new night on uh, njpwworld.com and Fight TV. That's right. And if you guys watch Rampage on Friday and you're like, my God, that Minoru Suzuki Lance Archer match was awesome. Well, hey, if you're in Garland, Texas, two days later, Suzuki and Lance Archer will be facing Tom Lawler, our own filthy Tom, and Royce Isaac. So check that out on Sunday. And Rocky, I want to thank you so much for doing the show here today. And uh, as noted, we'll have you on again in a uh, few weeks to talk about the uh, show coming to Philly. So thank you again. Yep, thanks everybody for listening. We are totally out of time. Mac, as always, callers and listeners. We'll talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.